Hello, and welcome back to Educator.com, AP World History. Today, we're still in period four, it's discussing imperialism, nation-state formation. Imperialism and nation-state formation. So, one of the things we want to look at is establishing transoceanic empires. Now, states that already had transoceanic empires expanded them. And an example of this is the British control over India. Now, you may remember that uh, the original intrusion into India was by a company, British East India Company, and they used their operatives to accomplish things. And then as time went on, they needed help from the British government, and the British government helped them because it was the biggest, most profitable enterprise in England. So it had a lot of pull in politically. So it moves from a quasi-state interest, which I mean it's not really a colony, of, it's a, a business, but that business is so intertwined with the government that it's a quasi-state interest to a complete colony. And the key event I'm sure you will read about is the Sepoy Revolt, 1857 through 58. Um, don't want to go into it in too much detail because you'll read it, I'm sure. But uh, we have to ask ourselves what was going on there. The, the initial problem was that uh, the British came up with a new uh, rifle for the Sepoys were um, Indians who worked for the British East India Company as soldiers. To, in other words, to carry out what they needed to carry out, giving them security. Uh, they were both Muslims and uh, non-Muslims, Hindus. Uh, but there's this little thing that happened. This new rifle required, uh, it shot more rapidly, and the uh, rounds, the bullets, came in cartridges, and you had to rip the cartridge open with your mouth. And uh, in order for this to work well, the uh, cartridges had to be greased. Now, the story got out to those who were uh, Muslim that the British were using pig fat to uh, coat these, these uh, bullets and that they would be ingesting pork, which was totally against their religion. And they were up in arms about that. And then supposedly the, uh, the non-Muslims, the uh, Hindus, were told that uh, beef grease was used, and uh, beef is not to be eaten in, uh, in their religious understanding. And so they were up in arms. Now, of course, I don't suppose it would. Yeah. I've never read anywhere what exactly was on those rounds, but it doesn't really make any difference. That these people felt this made them very angry and it led to a revolt. Now, uh, let's just, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's take a look at uh, how the pe how people in England felt about this. And at the top echelon, they were aghast because uh, there was atrocities on both sides, both the, uh, the British soldiers uh, and the Indian soldiers fighting against each other. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a pretty picture. And Queen Victoria herself was, uh, was really upset and so they, they, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to rectify this? So they made a new law, and that the, the system, system was, we can't have this run by a company anymore. It's, we got to have the government take over, okay? 
And if we do, she said, it should breathe feelings of generosity, benevolence, and religious toleration. Now, she's seen, okay, this was a problem. This wasn't good. We're going to fix it. And uh, there was in the, the wording uh, uh, a reference threatening undermining of native religions and customs. So she said, no, we can't have that. And it was replaced by a passage guaranteeing religious freedom. So everything sounds like, wow, the government takeover uh, of India and making it a colony is going to straighten out all these bad things and be nice. Well...